Welcome everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Today we're going to talk about spell picks. And this particular video is going to uh, focus again on my favorite class, the Magus. We're going to talk about the spell picks that do damage. Uh, we're going to focus on single target damage, and we're going to talk about that while we're doing this for a reason. Um, first and foremost, uh, for those of you that don't know, a Magus is a character that either focuses their um, melee touch attacks through their weapon, uh, that is literally so that they can crit and do more damage potentially uh, Which of course is uh, outweighing the cost of you not doing a melee touch attack Which is easier to hit your target Versus you swinging a weapon which will probably but not always Rely on you hitting them with their full armor class So that's an issue So that's one of those cost analysis that you have to do on your own And I'm not going to tell you why it's good or bad but honestly, if you're going to play a Magus, you should probably get one of the better critting weapons that you can get for your class. Uh, that's usually something that has a good crit range, something like a, a 18, 19, or 20 is the best one that we have available. And you want ones uh, that you can use depending on how you make your build. What I mean is, are you a dex-based character? Then go for something like a rapier. If you're going to be a strength-based character, I want to say that they have a, a scimitar is one of the ones that's... Uh, not necessarily weapon finessable uh, allows you to still do the same kind of damage but you have that 18 19 20 crit range which you can, of course extend various ways uh, if you're going to go eldritch archer which is a completely different kettle of fish that is also a magus subclass that instead of channeling your melee touch attacks through your weapon you're channeling your ranged touch attacks and there's more of those through your ranged weapon and that can be a sling that can be a bow a composite bow, of course, which fit in the same category. And again, we're talking long bows, short bows. It can be crossbows, again, light or heavy crossbows. It can be a sling staff. Uh, they're probably even forgetting a couple things, maybe like a shuriken or a dart. Never really tried them, but it's possible. Uh, it is a ranged weapon, and that's all that really seems to matter. Those ones all seem to do low crit chances, with the exception, I want to say, of the crossbows, which I think have a 1920 naturally built into them so you could extend that into 17 18 19 20 which doesn't sound stellar but that's a, a 20 percent chance that you'll crit instead of a, a five or ten percent chance which again are really really low now i'm not going to tell you again how to play your elder charger uh, i actually play an elder scion because it's one of my favorite ones because you play it more like a sorcerer than anything else and you get uh, spontaneous casting uh, and I've actually made an Eldritch Scion that can actually behave like an Eldritch Archer as far as uh, I do good range damage, I have good range spells, and I have the ability to blast you in the face in melee combat, fully armored up with my spell buffs, as well as me doing the really, really good damage that comes from a lot of the range touch attacks. But now let's actually get into the spell picks uh, and you see what I'm talking about. And we're going to step out of the game here, so give me a quick second, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now this, I know, is going to be scary because we have numbers and numbers and more numbers. And I've broken these things down based on specific categories. So the first thing you should see here is that we've based these off of spell levels. So you'll see as we go from left to right, spell ones, picks, uh, up to, and again, everybody gets the level zero stuff. So I'm not even focusing on those and they're not particularly anything worth writing home about. Uh, but level 1 all the way up to level 6, which is as far as you can take it, Magus. Now, you'll also notice there's a couple other things that are missing from here. We don't have all the spells, and that's because we're playing as an Eldritch Scion. So that's limited picks. Uh, and also, when you get to certain levels, certain milestones, I want to say that uh, it's level 9, 13, and 17, you get a, uh, playing the Eldritch Scion that I play anyway, which is the Arcane Bloodline, you get a free spell pick that opens up your spell book in ways that you didn't have as a Elder Scion before. So, for example, Ear Piercing Scream you see here, when you level up your Elder Scion, you can only pick these spells as far as damage-based spells. Uh, so Shocking Grass, Burning Hands, Corrosive Touch, Magic Missile, and Snowball. Ear Piercing Scream is not there. You can unlock that ability at level 9 as the earliest. Doesn't mean you have to pick it, but I, I picked it at that point so you could see what kind of damage potential it has. And then again, you'll see the same as we go into level two. Uh, we get all the way up to Stone Call. When you see that the alphabet basically, because uh, it's uh, alphabetical in most cases, uh, you see when the alphabet resets itself, but we're still in the same level, that's us good dipping back into um, spell picks um, at a higher level, stuff that we didn't have access to originally, but at level nine, 13, 17, or even 19, when we get like six free spell picks, you could dip back in and get these spells if you want. And in some cases, there's some pretty good ones in there. 
So that's why I did it, so you could see what it looks like. Uh, again, all the way up to level 3. 3 doesn't have much. In 3, you have access to all three of these once you get to level 3. So you Fireball, Lightning Bolt, and Vampiric Touch. This is the only one that you'll benefit from if you're any kind of Magus, uh, except for an Elder Charger. And it's not that an Elder Charger would not benefit from this, because, again, they do decent damage as you level up and the ability to give you temporary hit points equal to the damage you're doing for one hour it is a pretty nice spell that's why it received the gold star which is why it's green here but uh, after that there's nothing in this level that's worth picking as far as damage is concerned and I'm, let me put that caveat out here for you guys and a lot of people are going to be screaming well you're not picking these spells that do instant death you're not picking these spells that do um constitution damage you know you know, the ones that do strength damage and again those are viable picks i'm not saying otherwise we're talking straight up does it do damage i don't want to talk about innervation which is an amazing spell which i love uh the ability to strip levels off of a target at range is an amazing thing i'm not talking about the ones that are like save or suck spells where it's like save or die you know those are amazing spells but they're not doing quote unquote damage and it's the damage potential that we're focusing on here so just just let's throw that out there for you guys now you see once we get to level four we get a shit show of stuff that shows up a whole mess of things so first you have your troll fireball dragon's breath ice storm shout and then you can unlock these abilities later bone shatter obsidian flow and bone shatter is an amazing spell um we'll talk about that in a bit um then you get to level five it's more of the same but a lot of weird stuff shows up and it gets trippy from here um so you have acid spray cone of cold fire snake constricting coils that's damage something you can dip back into later shadow evocations another one you can dip back into later I'm not a big fan of it i like it for its utilitarian reasons but it actually wouldn't make my list and you'll see why here in a little bit uh from there uh icy prison is another one that they've just uh given us most recently that the devs have unlocked a couple other new spells and icy prison i want to say is one of them uh, really nice damage, and you'll see that here in a moment. Uh, then we get to level 6, you get Acid Fog, Chain Lightning, Disintegrate, Hellfire Ray, Sirocco, and Umbral Strike. And I point out Umbral Strike, even though it's not one of my favorites, it's far from the worst one. Uh, but Umbral Strike is one that, weirdly, you can pick it as you level up. For those free picks, for some reason I could not pick it. I don't know if that's a glitch. But it was not available unless I picked it on my when you, when you get like a free spell or free two spells when you pick it those ways. This for the ones that you get like at uh, was it level 17 and 19, where it's just like a free spell from any level you want to pick. For whatever reason, number strike was not there. I don't know why. So if you want it, and I'm not saying you shouldn't get it, if you want it, pick it up when you have the opportunity. It is a range touch attack. It is a really nice range touch attack. It's not the best one that you can get in this level, but it's pretty good and it does a lot of cool stuff. So. Definitely something worth considering. Notice that when you dip out of there and we get into these trippy ones, we have Banshee Blast, Cold Ice Strike, Elemental Assessor now becomes available. And these are free pick ones now where you have to use those, one of those one through six picks that you can have. At level 19 or at level 17, you get one free pick. You can get an Elemental Assessor, Serenity, which is a really nice one, same as Tarpool, a very nice spell. So let's go into them and break them down in a way that you might be able to understand it. So what I did was I actually based this on your level, level 1 to 20, and you'll see multiple graphs based on the spell level. And what we're focusing on here is the maximum amount of damage they can do. Now, this is a caveat with this. One, we're assuming some things. One, that you hit. Two, that they didn't resist it. Three, that they didn't have damage reduction or damage resistance of any kind or immunity to the type of damage we're talking about. Looking at you, magic missile, and your you know, hatred for the shield spell. So... We're literally talking about if it hits the target and, and you do the maximum damage that the spell says it can do, what could it possibly put out for some damage? So what you're seeing here is there's two really good contenders right off the bat. One is Snowball, and that's the one that's going to be out in the lead from uh, Time Immemorial for a reason. We'll talk about that here in a second. It is a ranged touch attack uh, doing 1d6 of damage per caster level. Uh, so at one... Level 1, literally this, this, the 6 is what you're seeing. You actually see it as 7. We'll get to that here in a moment. It matches almost perfectly with Shocking Grass, which is just lagging right behind it. One point away, no less. And there's a reason for that. So Shocking Grass does the same 1d6 damage per caster level uh, through up to 5 caster levels worth of damage, which is why it caps out at 30. Snowball caps out at 31 because Snowball is a range touch attack. Uh, it has the ability to... Uh, get a plus one to its damage thanks to point blank shot now it's not plus one per die attack that's important to note here 
So this is literally just a plus one thrown on it. And then again, it has to be within point blank range. So I added it for sake of argument because I can see a lot of people saying, well, I'm a ranged attacker and I am too. So I'm totally digging the fact that the snowball does slightly more damage and it has a lot more utility in my opinion too. We'll get to that here in a moment. But again, you can see that it's right up there with Shocking Grasp and so close that 31 and 30 is not going to be anything to be like, oh my God, you could totally, you're gimping your build by going Shocking Grasp. You're not. And again, the reason you pick these spells is because if you're a ranged uh, Eldritch Archer, which I'm not, then you can fire Snowball through your bow and have a chance for critting, so extra crit, so you'll see that down here. Uh, for the melee ones, for Shocking Grass, you're channeling it through your weapon. Now, again, I'm an Eldritch Scion. I'm probably going to wield a, a melee weapon at some point, so there's probably no reason that I shouldn't be swinging uh, and doing extra crit damage, hopefully, with my Shocking Grass, you know, using a Rapier, perhaps, because I'm going to go a dex base build. So again, good. Corrosive Touch has that same ability. Its damage is lackluster. The highest it gets is 20, not counting crits, so it's really kind of meh. It's acid damage, so again, you have to take into consideration the fact that A, it's giving you a different damage type. You know, again, there's that potential here. Of course, the fact it's a melee touch attack, even if I don't channel it through my weapon, the chance for me hitting my target's a lot better because I'm not counting in their armor and their shield armor. So, much better chance for me to hit my mark um, so there's that, but again, it's something that if I had to pick it, sure, I'll go with it. If I don't, or I'm limited on choices, this will probably be the one that falls along the way. You'll see this one here that just keeps staggering, and this is the Magic Missile. This is the one that's auto-hit. Again, there's protections out there like Shield Spell that basically neuter this spell completely. There's, of course, Spell Resistance for almost all of these ones, and we have taken that into account. There are some where there are saves that I marked up here, and there's ones that have uh, no... Uh, spell resistance snowball is a wonderful spell for many reasons and this is just one of them but magic missile is one of those spells that again can be resisted with spell resistance it's auto hit so if it does the damage it's going to hit them and it'll do the damage uh and it's staggers with one missile the second missile third missile fourth missile and then it casts out at the fifth and final missile doing a maximum of uh 25 points of damage maximum of course if it hits so it's a nice spell. I'm not going to say it's not a nice spell. The fact that it's auto-hit is extremely helpful, especially early on. You get it for free in the build that I have because of my Arcane um, Bloodline, and it's one of those free spell picks that I get, so it's not even worth arguing about whether you should pick it because I'm just going to get it anyway. So yeah, I'll have it. I will use it for that to get Flea or that one guy that, that's a track star that decides to make a break for it, and I know I need to hit my mark, and this will be enough damage hopefully to kill him. I'll cast Magic Missile on his ass, and those missiles will hit the mark as long as he's not have a shield spell or have some protection. Otherwise, it neuters that. It'll do its damage, and I'll have hopefully killed that guy before he alerts the guards, so to speak. Um, of these spells, you'll see that I've, uh, based on level, you'll see I have broken them down into gold, silver, and bronze. And again, there's honorable mentions. Burning Hands didn't even contend. And again, it's an AoE spell, so there's reasons for wanting it. But again, we're talking a single target damage. Now, this is a good reason for mentioning it now why I'm focusing on single target damage. A, I'm assuming you're playing with a team. This is not a build that I would ever uh, suggest, or spell picks that I'd suggest for a single target um, uh, single combatant solo run. They're good spells in here, don't get me wrong, but you need your buffs then, you need all kinds of other stuff, so you may not be able to pick as many damaging spells as you want. If you're letting the team tank for you and do all the stuff that they're supposed to do for you, heal you and buff you and all that fun jazz, then you can focus fire, and this is why single target became more appealing. Because A, I can't really calibrate my numbers, like think of a fireball spell. I could hit one guy for 60 points of damage maximum. I could hit 20 guys for, well, maybe not 20, but let's just say 10 guys for 60 points of damage each maximum. That's a lot of damage. That's 600 points of damage in a round. That's huge. But can I always guarantee that I'm going to hit 10? What if it's only 5? What if a bunch have reflex saves? You, know, you see what the problem is. So we're focusing on one guy, the boss, so to speak, the guy we want to take out. right? So that's the goal here. So that's why everything's based on single target numbers. So... Shocking Grass, uh, well first let's go to the worst. Uh, I have an, in level 1, Ear Piercing Scream, which is one you'd have to pick later. And it's not one that's available, so you'd have to burn one of your spell picks to get it. So one of the reasons why it's so low on the totem pole here is bronze, uh, is because of that. It's a not heavily resisted damage type. It's Sonic. It's an auto-hit move, which is nice. 
uh, they can resist it. Uh, there's an effect that's called daze that goes with it. It only lasts for, I believe, a round anyway. But there's a chance that they can resist it with a fortitude save. And they also take half damage. Why is it that I'm not particularly concerned about this? Why is it getting an even a bronze then with all that negative that's going with it? Well, the fact that it's auto hits nice. The fact that there is the potential to daze a target is nice. The fact that it's sonic damage, which is not heavily resisted, is nice. So again, yes, I can see it. It's not the best spell ever, but 30 points of damage is still a respectable amount of damage, and it literally climbs up here with the others. It just takes a while to come online. The reason for it is uh, level 8, you don't have it as a Magus. Level 9 is the first chance you can pick it. So that's why it's a late bloomer, right? So it's comparable damage once you get to it, but you've already had other stuff that's already been beating it out by the time you have access to it. Yeah. Again, I can see it for the fact that it's an auto-hit move, much like Magic Missile, and a different damage type. So it's tied with Magic Missile, and for that reason alone. So we have slightly less damage, slightly more damage in theory. Uh, they're both auto-hit moves. This one will probably do more consistent damage, I would say. Again, not counting Shield Spell and blah, blah, blah. But it would do more consistent damage. There is no save, so they pretty much are going to get hit with it. They're going to take damage, and the minimum amount of damage... No, that's why you have uh, minimum damage listed up here. So you need to know that there are chances for you to get zeros. I need to point that out to you so you're not thinking that, oh, he's saying I'm always going to get 30. No, this is maximum. Here's the minimum for a reason. Zero is you missed. Zero is they had a high reflex save, and they had that, what's the ability, evasion, where if they make that reflex save, they take, like, no damage. That's why these ones really are going to start sucking for you guys. So zero there. You missed for your melee attack, zero. You miss with your ray, zero. Auto hit, zero special. That's because of things like shield spell. Right? Um, I would honestly take this away. And if you take this away, the minimum damage is with one missile, two points of damage. The best minimum damage, if you have access to all five missiles, is would be 10. So this is not a bad spell. It really is not a bad spell. It's one of the reasons why it is a bronze instead of allowing you down here with corrosive touch and burning hands, which suck balls. Snowball on the other hand, or sorry, let's go in order. Shocking Grass would be the next one. It's Silver Metal. Shocking Grass. Why? It doesn't do anything other than damage. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good damage. And as you can see, it keeps pace with Snowball pretty good. And I am an Elder Scion, so I can crit with this particular spell, uh, channeling it through my weapon, more likely than I am critting with the melee touch attack. Same with Snowball. It can crit as a ray spell, as a ranged touch attack spell. But those crit chances for those uh, touch spells, whether it's melee or range, doesn't matter. Unless you buff it some way, which there's like a feat you can do. It's going to crit on a natural 20, and that's it. So this snowball spell, while it looks better than Shocking Grasp, and it is technically better, I'm more likely to crit with this because I'll channel it through my weapon. This one I will not channel through my weapon because I'm not an Elder Jarcher. So if you're an Elder Jarcher, this spell becomes immediately your first pick. And you will love it, love it, love it. Remember that point blank shot does help here. It also increases your check of, uh, chance of hitting with it, which is amaze balls. There's no reason in the world for you not to take snowball, even as a magus that doesn't do really ranged attacks. The fact that it staggers an opponent, it doesn't last long, but it can stagger them for a round, and that may be enough for you to capitalize on some serious damage. Why not do it? You know what I'm saying? The fort save that you get is a problem because that takes away the staggered effect. But you're still doing the damage. It doesn't do anything about cutting the damage in half or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm losing my staggered mm, sometimes. But then you, you pick a better choice for targets. You don't use this against the fighter or the barbarian. You use it against the lowly wizard and you stagger his little ass with a spell from distance with a snowball. Kind of nice. And again, consistently going up for damage, damage, damage. It's just a pretty, pretty spell all the way up until it caps out at level 5. And you will use it as a staple for a long, long time. Um... Uh, so again, that's why Snowball beats Shocking Grass. Shocking Grass is still a great spell, and because of Elder Scion and you know, any other Magus melee-based build, it's a spell pick for sure. Uh, but I, if I would have to pick two spells, Snowball would be one, Shocking Grass would be the other, and that's the two that I would go with for level one. And again, Ear Piercing Scream is nothing wrong with it. Magic Missile, really nothing wrong with it. There are problems associated with either, but the fact that they're auto-hit is really what keeps them in the, the running with this bronze. Let's go to level two now. So here's our level 2 spells. Uh, we have, uh, left to right, we have Acid Arrow, Frigid Touch, Molten Orb, Scorching Ray, Stone Call, Bone Shaker, and Burning Arc Unlock later on. Now, 
for the ones that don't unlock, let's look at them first. Acid Arrow is a classic. It is a race spell. Uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage. It really takes a while to come online, as you'll see here in the chart in a moment. Uh, but it does good damage. This would be a spell that I would recommend for those of you that don't know. As an Eldritch Scion, you can pick different bloodlines. Uh, I'm picking Arcane, which is for various reasons. I get more spell choices this way. But if you didn't want to do that, and it's perfectly viable, and again, I'm not telling you how to play your character, if you went, I want to say it's the Dragon Bloodline. If you go with the Dragon Bloodline, and you pick one that's an acid-based dragon, I want to say like Black Dragon is a fine example of this, where they spit acid. As, uh, dragon Bloodlines all get the same feat or ability that they do extra damage, elemental damage, based on the element of the type of dragon they are. So again, like a, a red dragon is a fire dragon, so they do extra fire damage with fire-based spells. Then, uh, In this case, then a black dragon, which does acid damage, would do extra damage uh, for acid-based spells. Why is this important? The acid arrow does 2d4 damage, lame sauce damage. It's eight points max on the first hit, and then it'll tick uh, another round potentially uh, more, depending on how high of ca uh, caster level you are. So you see here we start out with nothing because we don't have access to it, then it finally does 17. Why is it 17 and not 16? Point blank shot gives us that extra point for that first initial strike. So 16 becomes 17. Again, lame sauce damage. We had better stuff. It's snowball. There's no reason in the world that you'd want this. Snowball's already trumping it at this level. So why get it? Well, a different elemental damage. But again, if you're black dragon focused bloodline, you do an extra point, one point of acid damage per die of damage. So now this spell did 2d4 on the first hit, so that's two points you get, and then it does 2d4 in every consecutive round that it ticks off, and I haven't tested it yet, but if it does, it'll do an extra two points of damage on that next round, and then an extra two points of damage on the round after that. So each round that this goes, and I want to say it goes through six potential rounds plus the first one, it'll do an extra two points of damage. So that's seven rounds with an extra two points of damage. That's an extra 14 that you can tack onto this number by the end of it. So 57 could suddenly turn into 71. That's a lot better looking now than it was, right? And you can see the benefit of this. This is a really nice reason for going Black Dragon or the other Acid Dragon. There's at least one more in there. Um, and it's that Acid Spells. Focus on that if that's your thing make it your thing. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's a lot of really good acid spells that do a lot of damage because of the extra ticks that it's going to do per round. It's going to be a slow burn, pardon the pun, but the acid really will drive home with those extra ticks. That's really, really nice. But we have Frigid Touch, Molt Morb, Scorching Ray, Stone Call, and then the ones we're going to talk about after the fact. So these are the ones you just have access to once you get to this level of spell casting, which is uh, level 4 it looks like. Um, Scorching Ray is the, the top runner for obvious reasons. Uh, it does consistent damage. It has to hit, of course, but it does consistent damage. It has crit potential. Um, you have one missile, and then eventually you build into two, and then finally you build into your third, and you can literally do up to 75 points of damage, I believe. Uh, you get a plus one um, to your hit for each hit because of point blank shot. That's why it's not 24, 48 and six, uh, 72 um, so you get one point per ray I believe uh, if it's off by two points then you know 25 is fine then this one will be uh, 49 instead of 50 and this one will be 73 instead of 75 not huge differences but the point's still the same it's a single target move you check three different times to hit that mark which kind of sucks but you boom 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 damage 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 in theory and you will really hurt a single target with this spell assuming they're fire sensitive obviously um, uh, from there, the next runner up after Scorching Ray really was Acid Arrow, tied with Bone Shaker, which we'll come to in a moment. But Acid Arrow is because it's a steady burn ability to literally just come up and up and up and up, and eventually this this one. Um, where are you? That's your Scorching Ray. Where's my Acid Arrow? This one here. Yeah, it's it's slow, and yes, it's lagging behind two others, you know, three technically if you count, of course, Scorching Ray two others and you're like why not pick those well we did pick one bone shaker is one of them and that's why it's tied with bone shaker even though bone shaker kind of outcompetes it you'll see why here in a minute this one burning arc you might wonder why it is that i'm not going on and on about burning arc well, burning arc is a level two spell still but it has that reflex save problem just like molten orb 
where if they have a good reflex save and that evasion ability, they could take zero damage from this. And then you basically just screwed the pooch completely and got a whole lot of nothing for casting a spell. Yes, it's auto hit. Yes, there's a potential for it to jump around. Yes, in Molten Lorb's case, there's splash damage, but again, that, that reflex save for at least the splash damage kind of screws you. I believe it's auto hit, and I believe for Molten Lorb now that it's not only auto hit, but I believe that first target you hit, you're guaranteed to hit him. And that's two points of damage. It says the reflex save is for the splash damage in the tooltip. So if that's true, then the guy that you're targeting is going to get hit. So that's 2 to 12 points of damage, so that's why 2 is the minimum here with a question mark. But if it burns like it should, 1 to 3 rounds after, 1d6, 1d6, and 1d6, that's why that 2d6, which is 2 to 12, suddenly turns into 5d6, which is why you can get up to 30 points of damage to that first initial hit. Obviously it'll be less, it'll be like 24 maximum for the guys that got the splash damage. But again, the splash damage has to land and that reflex save is an issue. So this one's kind of, mm, maybe it's okay. Um, but again, we had Acid Arrow tied with Bone Shaker. Bone Shaker will clearly do more damage. And it's an auto hit spell, which you gotta love. You have to use a spell pick to buy it. That's one of the reasons it's not higher than Acid Arrow. Um, certainly it's competing with Scorching Ray and finally gets to the point where it outcompetes it at the very end of the leveling process. The fact that it's auto hit is of course nice. Yes, there's a save with it. That's another reason it's not awesome. Fortitude save will do half uh, damage. You cut the damage in half. So 42 becomes maximum, becomes 21, and 78 eventually will drop down to, was it uh, 39? So yeah, it's still going to hit though. It's still going to do damage though. That's one of the reasons I like it. Now again, there's that spell resistance problem where we have that all over the place, so that's not anything really special. Um, Stone Call is one of those spells that, oh, it looks amazing because there's no reflex or there's no saves at all and that's, there's no spell resistance to it. Why am I picking it? Because it only does 12 points of damage maximum. It's, you know, it's got difficult terrain. It's an AOE move. It's you know, got utility to it, but it certainly wouldn't be my go-to first pick. That would be Scorching Rain. From there, though, again, you see we have uh, Frigid Touch here as our uh, bronze contender. Why? Again, we're a melee-based touch attack build, right? You know, that's uh, Elder Scion slash Magus bread and butter. Um, so stuff that channels through our weapon, we're going to want to get it. Why is it bronze? It doesn't do very good damage. As a matter of fact, it actually does less damage or equal damage to, where is it? Shocking Grass, as soon as you can get it, it's 24 and 24 is maximum at level 4. It's the first chance you can to buy Frigid Touch. From there, it stays 24. There's no way to make it better. It's 24 and that's it. Now again, yes, if you were played the dragon type that had cold damage, you could increase this. Uh, it's um, 4d6 of damage, so only 4 dice, so you can only increase it 4 more points of cold damage, which puts it at 28. Sure, that's nice, but I can still get Shock and Grass up to 30, and if I'm playing an electrical dragon, I can get that up to 35, potentially. So, again, it beats it out. Why is it still picked? Because, again, we want to have stuff we can crit and channel through our weapon, and it does have this other ability going for it. It has the uh, uh, no save and the fact that it will stagger an opponent. And if it crits, I want to say it staggers for longer. So what becomes one round becomes like one minute or something retarded. So really nice ability. If it did a little more damage, even if it was like one more dice of damage, like it knocked all the way up to 5d6 instead of 4d6, I'd probably have given this a bronze, uh, silver instead of a bronze metal, tied it with, say, Bone Shaker, just because of its utility. But it's sadly lacking. And that's why it's only a bronze. And again, Molten Morb and Stone Call are just like left along the wayside. They're AoE moves. They're not bad AoE moves. I mean, for the level, Burning Arc is technically better than them. But again, it has that same problem with the Reflex save, just like you see with Molten Morb. Yeah, you know, it's not always going to be a problem. So it's nice damage, especially at level 2 spell. And remember, as a Magus, we don't get spells very early. You see, we're already in level 4 here before we get to these ones. And you have to get all the way up to here to earn Bone Shaker or Burning Arc, which I want to say this is level 9. Um, that's my free spell pick. So, again, most people won't even have that unless they specifically go with the Elder Scion um, Arcane Bloodline build, which is what I'm using. So, this is early, early picking. And it's still only level 9, so that's a long ways away from like a, a wizard, for instance, to give some frame of reference. A wizard at level 9 would already have access to level 5 spells. They've already passed Fireball and Lightning Bolt up 
by leaps and bounds at this point, whereas we're like struggling to get our spells, just to put that in kind of, some kind of context for you. Okay, now let's look at the chart though again one more time just to, to point out some stuff. You see we have Stone Call, you have Frigid Touch, this 24 Lame Saw stuff, uh, Molten Orb, you know, even it passes it up. Uh, but again, a lot of things have to happen and it can't crit like um, Frigid Touch can. So there's that. Um, these ones are the ones that you see all the way down here at the top, level 8. That's because you can't get them until level 9 at the earliest. Uh, so that's why Burning Arc and Bone Shaker are lagging behind. You see how Burning Arc potentially outcompetes at the same level that you can get it. The best spell you have, which is Scorching Ray. How weird is that? And this is single target damage we're focusing on. Remember, not the fact that Burning Arc can hit multiple targets, which is nice. That's why Burning Arc is not a bad spell. It's not a great spell for single target, is what I'm basically telling you. Yes, it's good damage. It's not reliable damage. Um, and that's really the reason that it didn't get a better rating than what it got. Going up to level 3, we have uh, very easy picks here because we have Vampiric Touch, which is good. Lightning Bolt and Fireball, which are the bronze and silver winners, respectively. Well, the reason that I picked Fireball over Lightning Bolt is not uh, aesthetic reasons. I mean, it, it literally is the fact that Fireball can be placed easier, in my opinion, than Lightning Bolt can, which is a beam, a long line, a very long line, uh, versus Fireball, which is a nice AOE circle that you can slap down on the ground and make sure your people aren't in it when the Fireball goes off. Lightning Bolt, you, you, you have to line them up in a row damn near to hit as many guys as possible. And again, yes, I know we're talking about single target, but if we're using them for what they should be used for, you're probably going to want to hit more than one guy with them, right? So it's easier to place Fireball than it is Lightning Bolt, in my estimation and be team friendly that way because these are not team friendly spells so lightning bolts uh the defunct loser uh bronze winner simply because he's the lowest fireballs the next at silver and then of course a uh, gold medal goes to vampiric touch because a we can channel it through our weapon b we can crit c it can give us temp hit points which is much needed for any kind of caster class as far as i'm concerned uh and of course there is no save this is one of the biggies here all of these, though, have spell resistance problems. So once spell resistance becomes a problem, that's going to be a thing you're going to have to focus on. But uh, still, really good spells. It takes a while for Vampiric Touch to come online, as you can see. It's really a slow burner. Um, these other ones, the Lightning Bolt and Fireball, are actually under the same bar here. You can't actually see it because they actually do the same damage, single target-wise. Um, same number on the dice, same amount of damage. Again, this would be different if you were a fire-based dragon or a lightning-based dragon. One of these would do better than the other. Obviously, pick that one would be the way to go here. But there's a lot of good fire spells, so if you're going to do dragon, I'd say either go acid or go uh, fire. Those are really good ones. Yeah, cold's not bad, but there's very few electric moves that, uh, as a magus anyway, they're going to sell you on being a, an electric dragon. Um, from there... Anything else really to point on in those? Not really. Go on to level 4 then. Uh, level 4 spells. We have... Drag, uh, sorry, Control Fireball, Dragon's Breath, Ice Storm, Shout, Bone Shatter, and Obsidian Flow and Volcanic Storm you unlock later. Again, you have to have that Magus ability or you have to be a Magus that gets like to level 19 otherwise to get them. Because it takes forever to unlock that stuff. That's why I like the Arcane. I can get it sooner, just not a lot sooner. Um... Of them, we're going to talk about all of them in one inclusive batch. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, silver medal winners here, you see. Uh, let's actually talk about why Control Fireball doesn't rank. It is nothing more than a Fireball spell. Same problems that we had with Fireball spell, which you saw before. Uh, it's a higher level pick, which just seems dumb. Uh, yeah, you get a higher DC than to cast it at, you know, for them to resist it for their saving throws. So there's that. Um, and it's team friendly, which is nice. It's team friendlier, I should say. I mean, you can still damage your team. It just does less damage to them. The minimum damage, I think, is the way they phrase it. Uh, so there's that. But it wasn't anything to write home about, so we just kicked it to the curb. These other ones are superior in various ways, and that's not necessarily even in damage, because you can see Shout gets dwarfed by a controlled fireball right out the gate. This one's at 60, this one's at 30 as soon as you can unlock it. But Shout has some utility to it. One, the save is not a reflex save, so while they can cut damage in half, you will still do damage. It will still hit them. They will take 15 instead of 30 for maximum damage. That's 
better than zero because that's what these guys are looking at. So again, you will do some kind of damage. Um, there is an effect that's built into Shout, which is a stun. I think it only lasts one round, and they can overcome it with that Fortitude save. But again, and you know, it's there. You're not going to have everyone that's Fortitude saving, hopefully. Obviously plan for that. Um, but some of the losers in this category of level 4 was Obsidian Flow and Dragon's Breath. Now, Dragon's Breath is the one that actually you would think was a really decent pick because it steadily goes up up to 72 points of damage maximum. And the fact that you can cast a variety of different dragon type of damage is why this is appealing, why it even made the charts, quite frankly, over something like Controlled Fireball. Because I can do Lightning, Acid, Cold, Fire damage using Dragon's Breath is extremely nice. Yes, there's that reflex save, so that same problem. Notice, though, this one actually does not have spell resistance problems, which is kind of another reason that we got this on the table here, even if it is only browns. And it does do considerable damage, not leaps and bounds better than something like Controlled Fireball, but 12 points over six, you know, 60 over 72. I'll take the 72 every time. So utilitarianly wise, this is actually a nice pick. Why didn't rake higher? Because of the reflex save. Uh, and it is kind of hard to place those breath moves because, again, it's a cone emanating from you. It is a beam emanating from you. It's not a fireball spell. You just place it and chuck it. This is literally shooting out from you. You have to be kind of in the front or on the side at the very least to aim it properly. And you can get good at it. But, again, I would pick it for certain uh, as I was leveling up just to have it because of these different types of damage. You might ne need that electric damage or that fire damage or that acid damage. You get the idea. Uh, Obsidian Flow tied it. Why did Obsidian Flow tie it? Well, the damage is not stellar. I have a lot of questions about this one because I haven't tested this one out yet because the Obsidian Flow, just the way that it's worded, sounds funny for the tool tips. So this is my best guess is what type of damage it does. Look, at it's way late in the game that we actually get it anyway. So that's another reason Obsidian Flow is not stellar. Um, it has the reflex save for effect and half damage. So again, a problem. It doesn't have spell resistance. That's the only real reason that it's probably on this list as being a bronze winner. Um, the damage is meh at level 4, really. I mean, 60 maximum is, is nothing to write home about. It's obviously an AoE move, uh, but the Entangled is kind of nice. And there's reason that this will become important later on when you're trying to trap people in certain areas. So Entangled, Paralysis, and other kind of moves that slow or hinder the bad guys in an AoE effect come in handy. And Obsidian Flow depending on the way I'm reading it, could be a lot better than it actually is. So that's why I gave it a hesitantly, hesitantly gave it a bronze level to match up with Dragon's Breath. The silver winners, the uh, second place losers, um, are Ice Storm and Shout and Volcanic Storm. Ice Storm and Volcanic Storm I consider to be basically the same spell, it's just damage type. We have ice, a cold damage versus fire damage. The one is basically the same as the other. Yes, you have to pick this one as a spell pick later on, so Ice Storm would probably crowd it out simply because I can get it while leveling up the normal way. You can see I get it way the hell up here versus Volcanic Storm. It's way the hell down there. Same amount of damage otherwise. Um, nothing really to write home about. The difficult terrain, the minus perception, those are useful traits I find. There's no saves, which is extremely nice. Uh, there is spell resistance problems but and low, low damage, but that difficult terrain, again, anything that can slow people down, like Obsidian Flow, Difficult Terrain, Entangled, all those moves, could come into play later on, which you see, so we're kind of building to something, if that makes sense. But let's look at the chart, so you can see what we're talking about down here. So you have, again, the clear and obvious winner is Bone Shatter, which is our uh, gold star, right here. This one takes a while to get, you have to pick it uh, as you level up, you don't get it. You have to get it with one of your free spell picks at level 13, I want to say. Uh, and right out the gate, by the time you get it, you're already doing pretty good damage at 78 maximum. Eventually, it caps out in two more levels to 90, and that's as high as it'll ever go. A single target, auto hit. A uh, really nice thing is that you know, even though it's their fortitude save to take it down the damage to half, you will still do damage, and it removes the effect, sort of. The initial effect is the target gets exhausted. For those of you that don't know, that means you're lowering the strength and their dexterity by the target, guaranteed by six points. Boom. If they make their fortitude save, that effect uh, exhausted goes to fatigued. And fatigue then is only minus two to strength, minus two to dex, which is still something. And I'll take something over a sharp kick in the ball sack, so 
I'm not going to complain about it. Bone Shatter is a really nice single target spell. Yes, it's late. It takes a while to come online. The fact that it's auto hit though is extremely impressive. It doesn't have the best range, I'm sure, but there's ways around that. Now, from there, uh, the next one on the list was Dragon's Breath. And as you see, it's uh, uh, bronze versus uh, silver. Why is that? Even though, despite the fact it does decent damage, there is that potential to have all damage be zero. And that was our real issue here. Shout, just to give another shout out to Shout, you know, that stun ability is extremely nice. It is a cone effect, hard to place, you get used to it. The, the, the save and throw, though, is half damage for uh, a fortitude save, so you're still going to do damage. And the fortitude uh, will also save uh, successful and also take away the stun effect, which didn't last long anyway, but it was there. As long as you stun one guy, it's done its job as far as I'm concerned. And there's always going to be damage, unless they're sonic resistant, which again is not very likely, but it's possible. So that's level four. Going on to level five, we get some weird stuff. All right, we have Acidic Spray, Cone of Cold, Fire Snake Constricting Coils, Shadow Evocation, Icy Prison, and that's where we stop. These last three are ones that you have to purchase. So again, as you level up, once you get that free spell pick, you can pick them. Otherwise, you're limited to things like Acid Spray, Cone of Cold, and Fire Stick. And while that sounds not, no big deal because they do pretty good damage, they're real late in the game. And 90 is nice, but I have spells already that were doing 90 or better. So hmm. um, Acid Spray is the clear winner out of those three. You would think that it would trump Fire Snake. It does and it doesn't. All of these are reflex savers, which is the real problem here. It's AOE moves uh, in, in the sense that these are lines. Cone of Cold obviously is a cone, uh, but Fire Snake is team friendly, so you don't have to worry about hurting your friends, your allies, so there's that. Maybe Fire Snake technically outcompetes Acidic for that, but I couldn't compare it with Constricting Coils because Constricting Coils, which is a pick you have to make, so you have to invest that free spell pick to get it. Constricting Coils is really good. It's just not as good as Icy Prison. And again, we'll get to that. But let's look at these here. So Cone of Cold sucks. Reflex save. We don't really need to go into it. 90 level points of damage. Is, mm, then it's cold damage. Uh, Shadow Evocation is good and bad all at the same time. It's good in that it gives you multiple spell picks for picking one spell. Remember, I can cast this and I can have Fireball. I can have Lightning Bolt. I can have uh, a Ice Storm, the Volcanic Storm. Shout, I want to say. They have like five different spells built into this thing. You only get to use one. That I picked the best damage for it. So 60 is the best damage you could possibly do. Not for all of those spell picks. So obviously that will be variable. But 60 would be the best. Uh, the worst type of damage would be probably zero. Uh, if you pick the wrong spell. If you wanted to guarantee damage, use the Shout, the Ice Storm, the Volcanic Storm. Those would be ones that you're guaranteed to do some damage to the guy more likely than not. Uh, but Fireball and Lightning Bolt are just going to be like reflex save and you're not going to get shit for damage. Uh, the problem with this spell, and it's not really a problem, it's the way the spell is made, is it's an illusion. So there is a will save. If they make that, they take a fifth of the damage right off the bat. From there, they can do another save if the spell you're trying to mimic, like a Fireball spell for instance, has another save, they get that save as well. So a reflex save is also applicable here. So obviously this is a will save against Ice Storm, Volcanic Storm, or Shout, uh, or and all the others, and a reflex save against Fireball, uh, another save, a reflex save against Fireball and Lightning Bolt, and I want to say Shout has a Fortitude save, so you have multiple saves, which are always a bad thing to do the maximum type of damage, which is kind of sucky, but again, I can see picking it because it fills a lot of different holes. I don't need it though because I had other better spells. The only real bonus to this compared to picking any of those other spells is the fact that you're casting as a level 5 spell. That means the DC save is a lot better than the level 3 versions of stuff we were just talking about. So there's that. Um, it's not that much and it's not that much to write home about. But yeah. Uh, Cone of Cola, again, we already talked about how it sucked. Uh, we have uh, Acidic Spray and Fire Snake Tide. Why? Uh, so. They both have reflex saves, that sucks. They both have spell resistance, also sucks. They're both a line. Um, and acid, Acidic Spray does more damage, so you would think that Acidic Spray is clear and obvious the winner. This one's team friendly. This one's not. 
that's the only real reason that Fire Snake is even in the running here. Otherwise, it would be just like Cone of Cold and it would suck balls. Um, this one here, the Acidic Spray, has two hits to it. There is a hit, and then if they fail the reflex save, there's another hit, like a, a tick of damage, a dot. And damage over time, there's only one more tick. But it's decent, and it's decent enough to actually make it a pretty good solid hitter. Now this one <laughs> is, is a misleading chart. Here's uh, my calculation for Icy Prison, which is this guy over here. Now notice first constricting coil has ridiculously good numbers for damage. Icy Prison has retardedly good numbers for damage, and there's reasons for both of those. They're misleading. I still like them and I want to try them for these reasons. Constricting coils has the problem that if they make a will save at any time, the paralysis ends, which means the damage over time ends. So this is a dot. This is a damage over time spell. As a matter of fact, I should probably add that to my stuff here so that it's clear why I like this spell in the first damn place. So this dot um, literally applies every round. That's why these numbers look so good, is this is not burst damage, this is damage over time damage. So it looks more impressive than it really is. Whereas like acidic spray, this lasts for two rounds and you'll do 132 points of damage, maybe, uh, in two rounds. This one, you can do up to 240 if it lasts the full time, but that's like 20 goddamn rounds. So it's, it's good and it's not good. This is the same with Icy Prison. Both of these have that same general principle for me of... When you need to put baby in the corner, these are the spells you use. You locking them down with constricting coils, which is basically paralysis, unless they make their will save, and they'll take damage over time, and again, unless they made that will save. Once they make that will save, you're screwed pooch. But for things that don't have good will save, fighters looking right at you, lock that prick down, let him take continual damage. I'm all good with that. Same over here with Icy Prison, only the difference is, is it's a reflex save, not a will save. So that's a problem, you would think. A, this is an auto hit move. This one is two, by the way. Um, this is an auto hit move and it's damage over time. There's just too much to write down in here. But if they fail the reflex save, they're paralyzed. They don't do squat. If they make the reflex save, they're entangled. Well, who cares? They, they can still attack, right? Yeah, but I can kite them and be at a distance and now they have these range stuff on me, which is fine. That helps. Uh, B, they can break out of the entangled uh, anytime they make a strength check. Um, I want to say that the reflex save is only for the very first round where they become paralyzed. I do not know if they can make a strength check after being paralyzed and break out of the ice. I don't know that each round that they're paralyzed they keep making reflex saves until they become entangled then. And then they had to make a successful strength check to break out of the entangled. I don't know how that works. but. In theory, the amount of damage you do is a flat amount based on your caster level. We get it at level 13, which is a year, uh, and I believe, based on the way I'm reading it, you always hit at least once. And why I say that, because even if they make the reflex save on the very first time you attack them, they're entangled. And if they're entangled, then they take damage. So even if they're entangled, they're still taking, at, at the earliest level I can get at level 13, 13 points of cold damage every round until they break out of it completely. Once they break out of it with their strength check, it's all over and you stop doing damage. But until that time, you can see that this goes on for a long time. Why is it such a high number? For some reason, and don't ask me why, instead of it being one round per caster level, which is like constricting coils, hold monster, hold person, your typical paralysis type of spells, this one is like one minute per caster level. So that's 60 seconds, that's 10 rounds per caster level. So at 13, I'm at 13 times 10. I have 130 rounds of damage potentially here. Will it last? Not likely. However, since it's a strength check, we have spells to make your strength go bye-bye. And let's use those. So this is where you can really have some fun slinging something like Rave and Feeblement, making them a weak little kitten. And then this lab them just be stuck in their entangled. I don't care if they're even paralyzed. As long as they're entangled and they're not doing too much range damage to me. Pfft, let them burn. I'll, I'll step behind the corner where I break line of sight and just let them just tick, tick, tick until they die. Cool beans. But you can see why this one is appealing. So while I, I made this chart here, and it's misleading as all hell, this is the chart without that number so that you can see what the other ones are capable of doing. So again, here's constricting coils, and again, misleading because once they make that will save, they're out of here. But again, there's ways of ensuring that their will save suck. And I'm looking at mind fog, baby. 
slap that down in an area where they're guaranteed to lower their uh, will, well, not guaranteed, where they have a really good chance at lowering their will saves and it just like snowballs from there. You slap that down and then hit them with one of these things and you're going to have all kinds of fun. Or just guarantee that you lock it in on somebody that you pretty much guarantee has a low will save like the fighter types. And again, you've, you've taken out one of the big bad guys in your area and he's taking damage. But from there, you get things like Acid Spray again or up there along with Fire Snake. And that's why these guys actually make the bronze because they're like the next best choices you have. Technically speaking, these two, while gold and silver, are poor choices in that you have to pick them. Right? These ones you get as you level up. You can just pick them naturally as you progress in levels. That's why you get them so early. These ones here, you have to literally make the conscious choice of saying, I'm going to burn one of my free spell picks. That could be for a buff. It could be for another AOE move. It could be for, you know, something like Innervation or, you know, like a Circle of Death or any other really kick-ass spell that you normally don't have access to. And I have to use it on these. So technically speaking, these ones aren't as cool as I'm saying that they are. But I'd at least probably pick one of them. Which one would I pick? Kind of like Icy Prison. I'm not going to lie. That damage it does look impressive. And I have the ability to lower your strength. So that's not bad. I even have spells that can lower your uh, reflex save. So that's not horrible. Will, though, is a kind of an obvious pick to me. And the reason for that is, is you're going to be fighting, presumably, fighter types as a fully armored Eldritch Scion with a sword and board or whatever you're going to do. You're going to have the ability to lock down one of his fighting buddies because he has a low will save. This is probably the better pick of the two. The damage is obviously the reason Icy Prison tops Constricting Coils. Mm. But, again, it doesn't mean Hill of Beans if either of them make those saves in the very first round and you do no damage. So, yeah, that's why these ones are here, though, too, because, again, reflex saves can be a thing. Going from there... We're getting into level 6 stuff, and level 6 stuff gets weird because we have so many of them that we actually split them into two separate categories. The ones that you get as you level up, that you basically can just pick naturally, and the ones that you have to burn those free spell picks on, which are a high commodity, as I've mentioned before. So let's look at the ones that you get as you just level up first. All right? So we have Acid Fog is going to be our first one over here. Uh, Chain Lightning, Disintegrate, Hellfire Ray, Sirocco, and Umbral Strike, which I have mentioned before. You have to pick as you level up if you want it, because if you use your free spell picks, for some reason it doesn't show up in the list, and I don't know what that's about. Uh, from there, though, let's take a look at this. Now we have uh, some AoE damage, uh, AoE damage ish, it's like team friendly, where it jumps between targets. Really nice, kind of like Burning Arc, but with electricity. Disintegrate single target, Hellfire Ray single target, up the yin yang. Sirocco, nice AoE damage, uh, and again, we're still focusing on single target damage here, but. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Acid, Fog, and Sirocco are really nice AoE type damages. Chain Lightning's decent, it's just that Reflex Save is going to hurt you every time. Uh, in this case though, Umbral Strike is weird. You would think it would place higher on my list, same like Disintegrate, which does like retarded damage. But almost everything we have here does really good damage, except for like Chain Lightning and Umbral Strike. Umbral Strike has that utility of you know making the target blind and ignoring most concealment, not total concealment. So even if you didn't have feats and something was concealed but not totally concealed, you could freaking hit them with this spell. Kind of digging that. And the fact that it hits them and they have to do a fortitude save or be blind, and they can do a fortitude save. Also, if they pass that, they take half damage. That's kind of sucky. That's why this one gets the, the bronze medal along with Disintegrate, which does ridiculously good damage. But if they make that fortitude save, the damage goes from that awesome possible of 241 down to like, I don't know, what was it like? 18 or 19 or some flame sauce shit. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, kind of sucky. And again, these ones are cooler. Same with Hellfire Ray. These ones are cooler if you're going the Eldritch Archer build because they're Ray Touch attacks. Remember the fact that they are Ray Touch attacks also gives us the fact that we're more likely to hit. Another reason we kind of like them, even though there's the chance that you could miss, which is why there's a lot of zeros here for their, the worst type of damage you can do. But there's the chance that you can crit as well. So again, more damage is always nice. Hellfire Ray uh, beats out Disintegrate, even though it um, did so because of damage, which, of course, is a pretty valid reason, in my opinion, to, to beat it out. It beats it out also because it has this uh, penetrates some fire resistance. So half the damage is fire and half the damage is 
magic fire. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but basically it says in the tooltip that half the damage is not resisted by fire resistance. So if you're hitting those demons or devils or whatever that have a decent fire protection, the whole fire raid will still hurt them. So that's why it kind of beats out Disintegrate. Uh, from there it ties, Hellfire Ray ties with Acid Fog because this one's a damage over time move so while the damage looks impressive it's over a long period of time but it gives it a lot of really good stuff as well in that uh, area of effect the targets move at half speed, that includes I think you and any of your friends, so that's a problem you're going to take Acid Damage of 2 to 12 every round which sucks uh, but if you can protect from it or are resisted to it then maybe you can stand in the fog and benefit from the fact that all melee attacks are a minus two to attack bonus as well as their damage output and then you also get a bonus a bonus excuse me a bonus you get a bonus though for sure to your armor class against ranged targets so when people are trying to shoot into the fog it's hard to see i guess is the way they're explaining that so a pretty good spell notice how it has no save and no spell resistance another reason why acid fog makes the chart in my opinion hellfire ray has no save but there is spell resistance as a matter of fact they all do except for that acid fog which again is one of the reasons why it made the top two uh, from there Sirocco beats it out why does it beat it out because while there is spell resistance and there is the chance to resist damage by half as well as resist the knockdown ability there's just so many more things that Sirocco does a I don't even care if they cut my damage in half because if they stay in there for the full 880 cut it in half make it 440 see if I give a damn you're probably dead anyway so yeah you're probably not gonna ever see it make up to that 880 because you're probably killing stuff before then, is my guess. Would you want to stand in this? No, this is not friendly uh, fire. This is stuff that's dangerous. But you do have a high fortitude save. You can get rid of a lot of problems. And the fire damage is damage over time, much like Acid Fog. So you can shrug it off with some spells uh, and protect yourself while standing in the fire and, and gaining the benefit of you know fatiguing or exhausting all the guys, knocking down all the guys in the area of effect. So again, Sirocco is a really nice top-notch spell, in my opinion, even for single target damage. From there, again, Chain Lightning sucks because of the reflex save. The fact that it can do electrical damage is nice, and boys look pretty when it cycles through all the bad guys. But, yeah, wasn't a fan. From there, let's look at the Freaky Deaky ones. And these are our ones that we have to pick with our free spell picks as we level up, which I think you can only get at level 17 and 19. Um, so you have to be picky and choosy on these ones because there's a lot of good stuff out there that you almost want to get. Uh, we have Banshee Blast, Cold Ice Strike, both those suck. I'll tell you why in a moment. The Elemental Assessor is our bronze, the, the silver goes to Serenity, and the gold star goes to Tar Pool. So let's break down why these ones suck first so we can just pass on it. Look at the damage. 60 and 90 for a level 6 spell at this level and reflex save to cut it in half which means zero damage for those high reflex savers that have evasion. Then why even bother me with this crap? I mean, a cold ice strike is lame compared to acid strike and the fire snake that we saw a level earlier. Um, same amount of damage, and it's just a different elemental type of damage, so who cares? Um, the cone and the panic could come in handy for Banshee Blast, I won't lie. There's two different saves here, reflex save, and then if they fail that, I want to say, then there's the will save for the fear effect. So, again, the same problem of double saves. Mm. Yeah, you could probably hit the reflex save guys, and then at least it's free stuff at that point, so the panic may not be guaranteed, but it's there. You know, you have the chance of doing it, but again, 60 damage just seems so lackluster at this level. I mean, we're really pushing it at the end of the game. At this point, we probably won't even see these levels until we get the DLCs. So, not my favorite. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to play your tune. Go for it if you want to. Um, the fact that it can be resisted by spell resistance is another nail in its coffin as far as I'm concerned. The top three, though, here. Now, again, these are picks. Remember, there's other stuff that was over here that was good. Some of these that I would marry together, like some Hellfire, Sirocco, Serenity, Tarpool, looking pretty damn sexy to me. Uh, Elemental Assessor makes the list simply because it's another ray spell. And again, for those Eldritch Archers of you, this allows you to do point blank shot damage, and it does four different types of elemental damage in the first hit. I want to say 2d6 of um, fire, cold, electric and acid then whichever one does quote unquote the best damage it gets like one to four more rounds or something of damage it's a really really nice spell for damage this doesn't there's no way you're going to get this 145 let me just say it that way because you're going to hit the fire one will get good 
and then the acid one will be sucky, or the cold one will be decent, the electric one will be bad. So you're never going to hit maximum on all these, uh, and you do not have the, the ability as a magus to go beyond level 6 spells. This would be one that it would be sexy if it was a level 6 spell for a sorcerer, which I think it is, and you went and got the uh, maximize metamagic, because then you could almost guarantee that this 145 works not counting any resistance that they may have to the four elements that you're slinging at them. And again, while that looks like an impressive number, we got way better numbers coming from all kinds of other shit. So 145 is not kind of anything to write home about. The appeal of this one, then, is the fact that it can crit, especially through your archer abilities from your uh, Eldritch Archer abilities. It can crit naturally because you have to roll for an attack roll. So it's a ray attack. So it can naturally crit on a 20. So there's that. Um... The fact that it does four different kinds of elemental damage is kind of cool. It's one of the reasons I kind of like it. Um, and they almost tell you why that they even invented the spell was because they got tired of you know monsters out there that were resistant to the spells that were slinging. So they sent elemental assessor spells at their ass, and they said, "Oh, you're resistant to those three. Okay, well, fire did more damage to you. So then the next three hits or four hits that come after are going to be fire damage. So here you go, jackass, and it just light them up. It's kind of cool. The uh, silver uh, metal goes to against Serenity. Serenity is one of those spells that's kind of weird. So let me really explain it first. First, there's this penalty problem. This will negates all damage. So you would think that that would put it under Elemental Assessor, and normally it would. It's an AoE, and it's a team-friendly spell, and there's a reason that I like it over the single target one. And again, you know, I know we're dipping out of the fact that it's not single target. That the damage is impressive in and of itself for a single target, so that alone is why I put it in the silver. The reason that I'm not worried about the will negating it, there's ways around that. We actually, A, are going to be probably fighting fighters anyway, so their wills probably suck anyway. The trick for this one is that the spell doesn't do damage unless they aggressively attack something, and that's you, your friends, your puppies, you know, whatever. So if you cast this down at your feet, it doesn't affect you or your team at all from what it's telling me in the tooltip. And then basically anyone that was in the area of effect when you cast it, the bad guys now, when they aggressively attack you, they basically take damage just because they're almost like thinking of attacking you. Like it's it's causing them physical pain and anguish to attack you. That's what Serenity does. So, yes, it's a damage over time. This is why the numbers look so impressive. Will you probably ever see those numbers get that high? No. But it'll still be fun to try. And I could see slapping that down and just basically making an AoE blanket of just shit show for guys to come up and try to fight me, go ahead, take a swing. You're going to take psychic damage, you jackass, just because I got Serenity up in the area. Oh, I got Tarpool over here. We'll talk about that next. And that'll be some nice fire damage for you. I could hit you with some cold damage that we got over there. we use Obsidian Flow and lock your ass down. I got all kinds of spells, man, to just keep you in this area of death and destruction, and, you know, acid fog and all kinds of other shit. So you can really be a nice AoE damage-dealing prick with the spells that we're basically showing you here. This is one of the reasons I kind of like them. From there, the last one, Tarpool. And this one's not only good, this would be one that I could totally see me wasting a spell pick at the very end, because you'd have to to get it. It's a good spell. AoE does decent damage, as you can see. Not the best damage that we've been seeing, but still good damage, and it has a lot of really going, uh, good things going for it. So there's the, the reflex save to, to not be entangled. So there is that problem. It does damage over time. There's the entangle effect. There's a bunch of extra shit that I couldn't even fit in here that it does. After you basically fail the one save, then you have to pass another reflex uh, strength or mobility check uh, if you fail the first one to get out of this mess. Otherwise, you're continually taking damage. That's why it's damage over time. It's just nice. And I want to say it's fire damage. So if you're, uh, again, that dragon type that's fire damage, you're getting more damage than I'm seeing here because of the extra da uh, point of damage per die. Um, and I want to say this is one of the one of the spells that if you fall down, uh, it's even harder for you to get back up because you're falling in the tar is the idea so that you take a penalty, your reflex strength and mobility checks if you fall down. Why do I mention that? Because your tar pool doesn't make you fall down. No, but Soroka does. You slap those two in the same area of effect and you can have fire damage that's great and fire damage that's meh, but they're slow as hell, they're entangled in the ears, they're not getting out of this or this anytime soon, they're fatigued, which is causing strength problems and dex problems and reflex problems and mobility problems. So you see with this house stack really nice together. 
Uh, and I could see this being a nice one two combo of just uh, fun as hell to just like fuck with somebody. Also, one of the other extras that's weird for tar pool. And again, you're probably not going to use it a lot. I mean, you see where you're getting it. This is levels 17, 18, 19, and 20 that you're getting this. But if you get to it, it's, this is more viable for a sorcerer build. If you do get to it, um, I think it said in the tooltip that even after you get out of the area, for one round, you still won't attack because you're busy cleaning the tar off your character because you're all sticky and shit. So basically, it's guaranteeing that you fucked over their ability to attack for at least one round. <laughs> which is kind of cool and I'm digging it and again our charts look weird because like I said you don't really unlock it till 17 or later uh, but you can see we have serenity here tar pools right behind it elemental assessor single target but still pretty nice and then we got these other ones that are just a lame sauce stuff so what is my basic take home message here is there's a lot of ways to increase your character's damage output uh, remember, I'm playing an Eldritch Scion, one that's melee based, but I'm still using Ray spells for full effect. Why? Because they just happen to be the better spells. They do more damage. They have the effects with them. So I'm getting staggered. There's more of them. I mean, they're for the melee, what do we have here? Let's, let's count them up. We got one, two, three, and I think four. And I think that's it. There's four Vampiric Touch. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that's all you get. Uh... Yeah, everything else at that point would be uh, an AOE effect, an, an auto hit, or a ray spell. And for ray spells, and again, we're not counting the, the, the zero level cantrip stuff. For ray spells, I got one, two, three. It takes a while to get to the next one. Four, five, six, seven. So there's seven of those, technically speaking, as you level up. And again, not counting your cantrips, which are okay. Um, so there's more potential, and the reason I like uh, touch attack spells, let's be honest here, ray and melee touch attack spells, is I am ignoring your armor. I am ignoring your shield. I am more likely with my low bab to hit you then, which is nice. Yes, there's auto hit moves. Yes, there's ones that AOE effects, but there's ways for you to be protected from them that I can't account for. So that's a problem. So having the ability to walk over to you and you don't get a save and screw you, man, you're taking damage. Kind of dig it. And the fact that they all are have to hit checks means they all have the potential to crit. So that's even more damage on top. Yes, it's only on a natural 20 unless I'm channeling it through my weapon. I understand that. But the point's still the same, that I can crit with those and I couldn't with the other ones. So that's important to me. I like the effects that you get. I like that in many cases we get ones that are have no spell resistance, which is extremely helpful. I mean, that's why I love Acid Arrow, it's simply uh, for the fact that it has no uh, save or spell resistance. It is damage. It's consistent damage. It's lame damage, but it'll get you there. I mean, 57 over the entire course of it's ticking, 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 and it's only seven rounds to do that. Still pretty good damage. You know, I'm okay with it being maximized, and I can maximize that spell, so I can get to that 57 if I want to. It's a low-level spell. You would add three levels to it, it'd be a level 5 spell. But the problem is, is, you know, once you get to level 5, we still have spells that will dwarf it for the amount of damage that it's capable of doing. So, I probably wouldn't if I had uh, an Elder Scion build, which I do, and I had the Meta Magic Feet maximize, or Empower even, would I slot it in my spellbook? You're damn right I would. Because just because I could do more damage with this other spell at level 5 doesn't mean that it's going to hit. You know, we've got reflex saves and all kinds of other problems with these. Whereas the acid arrow is single target and there's no save and there's no spell resistance and I'm going to hit you with it if I trust that my, you know, attack bonus is high enough. I will hit the mark. And why not have it be empowered or maximized so it does a pretty decent amount of damage of guaranteed acid damage to my you know bad guy so i hope this was clear i do apologize for being so long but there's a lot to cover um i highly suggest you guys make up your own little charts like this if you have you know microsoft excel or you know whatever you can do for like a graphing program so you can get a feel for why you're looking at them i mean because there'll be ones that just like oh this is a good spell no it's not gross of touch sucks it crits yeah, so the shocking grass. The only reason to take corrosive touch is if A, you're going to be using it through your melee attacks. B, you need that acid damage to hit the troll or whatever. So yeah, it's good. Acid arrow is better. And acid arrow is going to be one that just always gets better. You know, 
the problem with people playing these ones, they're going to be, well, you're using ray spells, you know, ranged touch attack spells uh, in melee combat. That will uh, afford the bad guy's attack of opportunity. Yes, that's true. However, there's ways around it. One, I can literally just build my character to have, uh, was it not weapon specialization, I want to say it's point blank master, uh, which you can get with a lot of effort, but you can get, and you almost want to get it because it gives you a, a weapon focus for ray spells with plus one to hit, uh, weapon specialization, which should be plus two to damage, which is a lie, it doesn't do that, so that's kind of a wasted feat, I'll grant you that. Uh, but then you get into the point blank master and you get that one high up, I want to say level 11. And at that point, I'm in full armor with my spells buffing me and I'm slinging ray spells at point blank range, getting that extra damage, that extra attack chance. And you do not get attack of opportunity against me. That's a really fun build to me. You I mean, it's like a, a battle tank. You get to like zap things at distances and you have good, good armor. So, you know, why wouldn't that be fun? Maybe it's going to be crap. I'll see when I actually level up my character and, and test it out. But so far, I'm having fun with it. And I could totally see some of these spells being ones that I will now pick based on the, the data that I'm seeing before me. And again, I knew Soroka was good. I always thought that Disintegrate was amazing. Turns out it's not as good as I thought it was. Um, Acid Fog is good. And again, a lot of these spells that I'm seeing that are good, they have that caveat of... It's AOE, I have to be careful where I place it, and I have to let them sit in it for long enough that it burns through the bad guys. So maybe dots aren't going to be as important. You know, that single target disintegrate damage is going to be sexy and appealing. We'll see as I level up. But I'm not playing it solo either, like I said. So if you're going solo, this isn't exactly the, the way to do this. You know, I would focus on uh, spike damage. I would focus on different types of damage. I would focus on good buffs. And there's a lot of stuff that we're missing here that I'm not even talking about. Let's just pass on that once before we leave. For instance, we're talking about free spell picks. Right? Uh, very first and obvious ones. Once we get past uh, Snowball, uh, at uh, level 9, you can get Ear Piercing Scream. Should you? There's no reason you shouldn't. There's better picks available at this level for you. You can get level 1, 2 spells, I believe, at this level. Uh, possibly even level 3, but I'm not sure. Here's level three. Yeah, you can get one, two, or three. Level one, two, or three spell free. Again, you have to be the arcane bloodline, which I am, for an Elder Simon. And you'll get a free spell pick at level nine. Should you get your piercing scream? No. Should you get uh, what level two spell? Bone Shaker? Burning Arc? Mm. I'm not going to say no against Bone Shaker because it's auto hit. Burning Arc, you got that reflex problem. Level three, there was nothing available. So it's any of those. Or a buff, a debuff, stuff that we're not talking about. One of the buffs that is available, and you should pick one of these two at least, in my opinion, for any build, Sense Vitals. And I can't put that up on here as a chart because it's it's nebulous. It's a, a spell that gives you sneak attack damage, and yes, that is a quantifiable amount, but A, I have to quantify it per level as it goes up because it gets better as it levels up, and B... I have to hit and have to know how often I hit. So I can't tell you, oh, well, I'm going to hit four times in a round and it'll do, you know, 5d6 of damage per hit. So that's, you know, 20d6 of sneak attack damage. I don't know that. Uh, so there's that problem with it. But I would definitely pick it. I would also pick, since I'm going to go ranged, I'll probably, since it's a dex-based build, I'll probably have a pretty good skill with the bow. I, I don't see, you know, at distance anyway. I may not be a point blank master with the bow. I could, but I don't think I should. Uh, i do that for an Elder Charger. If I don't, I can still use a bow at distance, like it should be used. Get a nice composite longbow, get some decent strength bump to it. I have spells that will increase my strength. I'll have gear that increase my strength and dex. All that's going to be good gravy, but now watch this. There's two spells that you're going to want to get if you're slinging a bow. You're going to want Hurricane Bow. And then you're going to want to get a spell like, and it's not the only example, but like in large person. Why? Because both of those spells on your character that has a ranged weapon will use the next higher category for that ranged weapon. So, to be clear, let's say you were doing 1d6 of damage with your bow. You activate Hurricane Bow. 1d6 now becomes 1d8. Not a big increase, I'll grant you. 
but now you activate the other spell, the enlarged person, right? You get bigger in size, and you do, again, the next size category of weapon increase. So 1d8 bow now becomes a 2d6 per attack bow. So instead of doing 1 to 8 points of damage per sling of that arrow, you're going to be doing 2 to 12 plus damage from your strength because it's going to be a composite longbow, which you've just increased again because of your enlarged person spell or something similar. Yeah, you're going to probably take a hit to your dex, which means your attack bonus is probably going to go down. And it's going to be likely or more likely for you to be hit, so that's the thing. But again, if you did that, I could see rocking a really nice Eldritch Archer or a Divine Hunter build or combo thereof where you use Hurricane Bow and uh, Enlarged Person, Frightening Aspect or similar spells that make you bigger so that you can do really, really good ranged damage with that bow. And it's the, the buffs usually are like minute per caster level buffs. So it lasts a good long time anyway. So you have like two of those slotted in your spell book every day. That'll probably last you for at least a, a two, three, four fights in a dungeon. Yeah, you may have to take more knees than I would because I have you know spontaneous casting and you don't, but you'll have all kinds of other perks that I didn't have. So again, we're not talking about all those spells that can add to your damage output because I can't quantify those in any real sense. But they're definitely good spell picks out there. And there's ones that, you know, like Greater Heroism, something that gives you a plus four to your attack rolls. Who wouldn't want something like that as a spell pick? It, it's The problem is, is that you only have access to it like two separate times at level 17 and 19, and you only have seven spells to pick. And that's a really narrow window then for you to pick stuff. So either Greater Heroism or Heroism, it's Watered Down Brother, are at least good choices I don't know that one weighs on my mind more than another, but I definitely want the bump to attack bonus. With that, though, I'm sure you guys have all special thoughts on how we've actually calculated these ones. Tell me if I've made a calculation wrong in your estimation or why you think it's incorrect or uh, assuming too much. <clears throat> like I said, I know that there's going to be these ones that are like, there's no way I'm going to ever see 1,690 points of damage to a single target from Icy Prison. But that's what it calculates out at. So it is sexy to see. I'll never see it. If I get a fourth of that damage, though, I'll consider myself lucky. But with that, my name is Brother Mune. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. How do you guys decide what spells to pick? Tell me how you guys play your build. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.